dog has a hip luxation. Not really. I'll admit I reduced it, but we're going to pretend. So this is the hip that was luxated. In order for me to feel whether it's luxated, I'm going to feel this dog is obviously sedated. I'm going to feel both sides. So I can grab the pub the pelvis on both sides. I'm feeling the ilium and the ischium on this side and on this side. And now I'm going to feel for the femoral head and see where it is. Now it's hard for you guys to appreciate with my, just my fingers feeling, but basically what I'm feeling for is a triangle. The two points should kind of be like this. If the, the greater trochanter is here in line with the ilium and ischium, so it forms a straight line rather than a triangle, probably there's a luxation, um, specifically a craniodorsal luxation, which is by far the most common type of hip luxation we see. Now, if there's a dog that has a ventral luxation, it will be very hard to feel where the trochanter is to begin with. Um, and usually the leg will be a little bit longer. So if you can appreciate, if I look behind these two legums, they're of the same length. When the dog's hip was luxated, if I fully extended the paw, it was maybe like this, or it was twisted in like a slightly strange direction. So maybe the hip was a little bit like this or a little bit like this. But the length, if I have to pull on the toes and put them together, the length is not going to be symmetrical for any luxation. So in this case, when I was feeling the dog beforehand, the greater trochanter formed a bit of a line instead of a triangle. It's a subtle triangle, but it still wasn't there. And if I felt both sides, even though this hip has really bad arthritis, I could feel that there was asymmetry in where they sit and where they sat. And the reason I feel both is because, like I said, that triangle subtle. It's not like it's not like the points are like this. Not super obvious. And so I want to feel both sides and see do they feel the same to me? And the answer was no. So then the next thing we did is essentially I moved the knee around like this to just get a feel of what it felt like when it was out. And there was crepitus. I could feel crunching and. It didn't really, it didn't really, um, you can't tell that it's out just by manipulating, but usually that crepitus will give you a sense that there's something wrong with that hip. And so the next thing that we did is I'm going to grab the knee, basically the condyles of the femur and the patella, and I'm going to grab the groin region with my other thumb. In a small dog, this is really all you need to do, and pull as hard as I can. It is an uncomfortable amount of pulling, for sure. <laughs> it usually feels like, oh boy, could I break the femur? The answer is no, I've never, ever, ever seen that happen, but you do need to pull quite hard. The first time or two you do this, if you've never done it before, likely you're gonna pull too softly, and maybe you'll hear or feel a bit of a thunk or a crunch and think, okay, I got it in. You can see this dog is already on the x-ray plate, and that's because it's not worth doing this somewhere else. You wanna do it in radiology or at a place where radiology is like right over you so you can play around with it be like all right let's see and then play around with it and be like all right let's see it's going to be a few times even for me um it's not something that you're going to get in right away so you at least need to give it a, um give yourself some grace here and try three to five times before you give up so um in this case we got lucky and we pulled in the hip went back in pretty quickly but i again i would really really advise giving yourself three to five times and basically, if that doesn't work, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna grab the bottom of the, the knee. So I'm not just grabbing femur and I'm not just grabbing soft tissue. I'm really grabbing the condyles and I'm like wrapping my hand around it. That's basically my stopper. So if I, if I grab the femur, I would just slide down to the condyles anyway. That's a good place to pull. And again, I'm just in the groin region in general. There's no specific area I have my thumb here. And I just pull as hard as I can. And then once you feel that thunk, if you think it's in, even if before you confirm with x-rays, the next thing I do is range of motion because you want to displace any gross tissue that got in the joint while it was luxated, any inflammatory stuff. You want to try and um, squish any fluid that's out of that joint as well. And so I'm basically just trying to encourage there to be more confirmation between the ball and socket joint. And that's why I'm doing this. Once I get that done, I'll be like, okay, then I'm going to do my next step, which is compare the two legums and make sure that they're the same length, that they point in generally the same direction, and call it a day. Now, this dog happens to have a weird confirmation because it's got an MPL on the leg that we just replaced. So it looks, if you look from the top, kind of like the leg, the, they, don't, they kind of cross over. It looks like maybe the knee is internally rotated, but they're the same length. I can feel that the dog has an MPL, so probably just has a bit of a twisty femur. And then we took an x-ray and we confirmed that it's in. 
to confirm it's in, I just keep the dog like this. I'm not gonna move it. I'm not gonna flip it so the affected leg is down, which is typical radiology principles. Torshi, I'm just gonna <laughs> keep the affected leg up and take the x-ray. All I need to see is that the hip is in and that it does not matter which hip is down for me to see that. I also don't need to put the dog in VD and pull on the hips or frog leg the hips because that increases the likelihood that this dog reluxates, especially in dogs with poorly conformed hips or like hip dysplasia, hip arthritis, all of that stuff. So we just took it right like this. So this is how I reduced it. And then this is how we took the rad. It's quite simple to do. And it allows you to just go in and out of the room more frequently and keep trying to re um, reduce the hip. So that's it for reducing the hip. I know in the textbook it says like use string and pull this way and then you pull this way. But for small dogs, you really only need your hands. For large dogs, you may need a separate person to help you like basically hold the groin region while you pull because they're quite strong. Um, but in general, you know, usually your hands alone is going to be just fine. Let's look at the x-ray before you end. Okay, so this is the lateral we took afterwards. Let me see if I can get the lateral we took before. You want to leave? Okay. So this is the lateral before, and what I can see here is that this is the hip with arthritis, so it's kind of hard to appreciate where this hip is in space, but I can see that there's no apparent joint here. It's just the head of the femur floating around. It's floating around above the ilium ischium at this level, and that's not where it belongs, I know that. And then I can see on the VD view much more clearly that the hip is not where it should be. So obviously the hip looks like it's out and it's either above or below. I can't tell without an orthogonal view. Above or below the hip socket. So this is how I tell that it's uh, dorsal and cranial. And so it's a cranial dorsal luxation. This just gives me a black and white picture understanding that's luxation.